This is the Trap Zone Podcast. My name is Travis Neville. I wrote this book called Ideal Man, Reviving Masculinity. It uh, lists off 18 traits that every man should be embodying in his life. I specifically wrote it to help those poor young men who were raised uh, maybe in a father-free home. I had a father-limited environment, probably went to schools that were primarily uh, female-led and never really learn how to be a man. I list off the 18 things that you should be focusing on every day. To be a man, you can pick that up at uh, Amazon. You can just Google Reviving Masculinity or Google my name, Travis Neville, and it will come up. Uh, easy to purchase. I think they're down to 15 bucks, something like that. I ask that you go get it. That helps me to be able to keep producing these shows. Uh, keep making t-shirts that I'll send out to you if you reach out and ask for one, decals, things like that. Um, and helping men be better at being men. That's what we're doing here. That's the whole goal. Uh, I'm giving that guidance again that maybe you didn't have, sadly, as a young man and are still kind of floating around there trying to figure out what you should be doing. Even if you did have excellent father figures and role models in your life, and you probably still do, uh, it's always nice to talk about these concepts and, uh, you know, kick it around and make sure that you're doing it right. I like to listen to podcasts and read books for that very reason, to make sure that I am where I should be. I like to decide who it is that I want to listen to, whose information I value, look into their backgrounds and to say, you know, and then uh, define who are going to be my mentors. Uh, lately, I've been getting into a lot of the things that Tim Kennedy has been saying. If you don't have, you know, follow him, you should. He's a uh, he's a veteran, a former Navy SEAL. He's also a former UFC fighter. Uh, either of those ought to be enough to impress you as a man. Uh, and his logic and sensibility and level-headedness uh, tends to align with mine. So check him out if you haven't. He's on Instagram. Um, I'm sure he's on Facebook, stuff like that. I, I catch his stuff on Instagram, but he's great big time workout guy. Um, anyway, that's the thing you should be doing. If you don't have role models in your life, be they famous or not so famous, uh, uncles, leaders, coworkers, bosses, um, you should. These are things that you should have around. So today I want to talk about this con this concept of having a code of conduct. I hear this question a lot. Hey, I, you know, you, you wrote that book. You've got these these things that I need to work on, and you gave me great examples on how to do them. But I need something more tangible, something more day to day, something where I can, uh, you know, use it as uh, less less bulky than a, than a whole book that I have to be focused on every day. So I thought, well, how about a, a code of conduct, uh, a thing that you could develop that is going to help you get by from day to day? I had a great conversation with my good buddy Eric. Uh, over the last week, we were working together, and we specifically were talking about religion. And I kept asking him this in different realms. I don't mean to say it like he wasn't answering me. I mean it that I, you know, I was very interested in this particular aspect. We were talking about religion, and I was asking him, "Hey, what, uh, you know, how does this help you from day to day?" I get the whole idea of heaven and your sins being forgiven and things of that nature, but day to day, I mean, you know morning, afternoon, night, going to bed, uh, in what ways does, does religion help you? I was raised in a household where that wasn't a part of it. And, uh, you know, so I, it's not a thing I miss. It's not a thing I know about. It's foreign to me. So he's a guy I respect. So I was really interested in his opinion. We had a great conversation about it. Anyway, we kept coming down to this idea of having a code of conduct. And that's a thing that, you know, his book is the Bible and, and he's created his own code of conduct that is sort of derived from that. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I in no way am trying to tell you my new book is like the Bible, but if it were, uh, you would, you know, you know, it would be helpful to you to be able to extrapolate that out into um, a personal code of conduct. So that's what we're going to do. So there are, uh, I would tell you, if you want to develop personal code of conduct there's a so there's a process that you would probably go through to get there and, and if you uh, are in, so interested you can sort of follow along in your head here and do these steps as i talk about them 
uh, and uh, maybe that'll help you to get where you want to be. And again, that's the goal here, help you be better at being a man. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so step one is going to be determine your goal, right? So you've got to decide what is it that you're trying to do here. And it can't be, oh, okay, my goal is to develop a personal codex. <laughs> so, uh, that's that's putting the, the cart in front of the cart. It's not even putting the cart in front of the horse. Um, you have to, you can't use the answer in the question, right? So what I mean by that is determine your goal. Well, what do you want to have uh, go well in your life? And I, I suggest you make it as specific as you can. You could say, I want to be happier. Um, that's probably still not specific enough. How about this? You'd like to, if you are, if you're determining that you yourself are unhappy, if you're, you, you tend to be angry more often than you normally would be, which is the thing that I've diagnosed in myself over the last probably three weeks. I can give you guys all kinds of ex explanations for that. I can tell you, hey, you know, I just got done moving. I'm still in a state of moving. I, you know, I live in this small cabin, which is great. I love my, my cabin. But all my things are someplace else, and I'm, I'm going through this process of building a house. I've, long story short, I've got a lot of stress, uh, different things that are unusual. My life is not as predictable and uh, routine as it normally would be and not as predictable or routine as it's going to be when the house is done when the painting season is over all these things um, so maybe that that's a goal of mine right to be uh, less angry and I know that that my that anger is here here are the symptoms that I'm noticing I find myself yelling at my windshield a lot <laughs> you know what I mean or I'll be in my sauna i find myself having mock discussions with people who aren't there and getting real fired up about it um and i think that's i don't think i know that that's just an expression of the level of uh uneasiness that i have going on in my life right now as you guys know and we'll have to do a whole show on this here pretty soon the masks of anger generally for men um your no matter what the negative emotion is that you are experiencing is it that, that no matter what that emotion is you will probably attempt your expression of that negative emotion will come out as anger that's how it is whether it's sadness discomfort uh disappointment um, anxiety uh, fear no matter what the negative emotion is for a man you'll probably express it as anger so i know that in myself i'm seeing this anger well where is it coming from well, i kind of already gave you guys the answer right it's all these stressors that i feel in my life all these places where i feel uneasy uncertain where things aren't predictable um and i know that this is a this is a path i've chosen and we'll talk about choosing a path here in a minute um i've chosen to go through this this discomfort where i am consciously living a life that most people won't live so that pretty soon here i can live a life that most people can't live. Let me say that again. I'm living a life that most people will not live so that I can live a life that most people cannot live. And what I mean by that is living someplace for free, you know, working very hard, spending all my money on trying to build this house, getting to where I have a paid for home so that I can have a paid for home. And then my financial situation is, is, is of course, going to be improved. And then I can live a life that most people can't, mortgage-free, right? So that's what I'm attempting to do. I realize that it's causing anger in my life and it makes me reflect and look at it. So say that's your goal. You want to be less angry. Okay, so you got to start there with a personal code of conduct. So in my case, determining that goal, I want to be less angry. Well, then I have to take the next step, step two. And that's to create a list of personal traits that you would you will embody to get to that goal. Okay, and uh actually let's go to step three first <laughs> step three is to make personal guidelines for action or well we'll say it this way uh what are the things you're willing to do to get to your goal first you determine the goal and then you got to say all right what am i willing to do to get here and what am i not willing to do well what i'm what i'm not willing to do is uh let that anger be expressed out to people around me um, just because i'm going through a thing that doesn't mean that people around me have to carry that as well right uh, I don't need to be yelling at people in traffic, and I don't. I keep it in my vehicle, and I, I you know, I blow it out. I, I get that release in my vehicle. I, you know, I, I get that poison out of me through yelling at my my windshield and and into the glass in my sauna in the window, uh, things like that. So I'm willing to get it. Out. I'll let it out there, but I don't want it to touch anybody else around me. It's not it's not fair. They didn't cause it. They can't fix it, and so they shouldn't carry it. So that's a personal guideline that I'll have, right? Okay, if I don't, you know, this is a thing I need to 
to do to get to my goal. Um, and then the personal traits. All right, so so what are the traits to get rid of the anger? Well, calmness. How about that? Self-control, self-discipline, the ability to reel it back in, right? Um, these are some of the personal traits. So I'm giving you this example to kind of illustrate the steps to creating a personal code of conduct. One, determine your goal. Two, create a list of personal traits that you will embody to get to that goal. And then three, make some personal guidelines for action. Okay, so get your goal, figure out how you're going to get there, and then take action. Let's just say it that way. Okay, so that's just a general example. Mine was my, my current anger situation, <laughs> which I'm uh, having a lot of success working on. Uh, most of the time, I just try to laugh it off. I'll catch myself yelling and getting fired up, and I'll just laugh and be like, holy shit, dude, this is part of the thing you chose, and it's so cool. Your house is going to be awesome. It's going to be paid for. You know, I just start thinking about what it's going to be like in a year when everything's done and I'm in my groove and things are going well, right? So there it is. That's just kind of a brief example on how to get through a personal code of conduct. Now, I'm going to tell you what my personal code of conduct is outside of the anger thing. The anger is just a small example of microcosm. Let's go bigger. These, This is my general code of conduct, my general personal code of conduct. There are five things. Uh, we'll go through them one at a time in no particular order. Uh, number one is, uh, the six week or six month rule. Okay. And this is a great tool for dealing with stress. Okay. If you are, like I said, if you're, you know, you know, you realize you're experiencing some stress and it's probably causing problems in your life. Ask yourself this, is it going to be a big deal in six weeks? Is it going to matter? If the answer is no, then it is definitely not a big deal now. Okay. But this is you gaining perspective, right? taking your sights and raising them up, getting to 30,000, well, we'll call this 10,000 feet. Uh, and then looking at, oh, really, that's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. So, um, you know, having a delay for a certain step in the construction process, for me, if I lose three days because a guy can't get there to, you know, put the block in, okay, or something like that, or do, do concrete, is it going to matter six weeks from now? Will it be done? Yeah, it'll be done in six weeks. So I'm not going to worry about it. And, and then if it's for bigger things in your life, um, will it matter in six months? Okay, and I, I would suggest you apply that to things like, um, you know, losing your job or, um, you know, getting divorced, things like that. You can, in my mind, you can recover from anything psychologically in six months, anything. If you're focused, if you really do the work and put the time in, even if you're half, half-assed half about it, six months is a long period of time. And your life's going to be totally different in six months than it is now in a lot of ways, right? If you choose to. So that's, that's the first thing. That's my pers first personal code of conduct. If I'm worried about something, I'm going to apply the six-week, six six-week, six-month rule. Is it going to matter? If the answer is no in either of those cases, then it, you can go ahead and relieve yourself of the stress that you are assigning to that thing. Okay? That will help you. So that's my first, the first kind of, you know, point in my personal code of conduct. Uh, second thing. Um, is to, to build people. I want to, in my life, build people. We talk about this all the time. As a man, you're always a leader. Um, there is no, there are very few dividing lines between leadership and manhood. They are basically the same thing. Um, so I want to be, be building people everywhere I go. I mean, everything I do, I, I go out of my way to compliment the people that I work with, compliment the people that I see in in process of my day. You know, it's the lady who checked out my groceries. You know, I'm like, hey, you were really quick at that. Thanks. Any any little thing I can do to get that out there, uh, that's going to build people. And as you build people around you, what happens when when if there's a group of three or four or five people and one person starts rising up, what's going to happen to those other people that are going with you? So if you're building people around you, what's going to happen to you? You're going to go too. You are uh, building yourself when you build other people. Uh, and I, I break those the building process into the four C's. Uh, the first one is compliments, like I said that uh, right there. Uh, the first C is compliment. Compliment people around you as much as you can in your personal circle. Uh, the second piece, and this one's a little more uh, tenebrous, and that's constructive criticism. That's actually two of the Cs, constructive criticism. Uh, and that's this. Having the courage to um, to say to somebody, hey, you know, uh, this would help me if you did xyz this way or i see you struggling with xyz uh, have you tried this or hey this is a thing that will make you better at your relationship or 
whatever it is. And obviously, that's an unusual circumstance. Most of the time, people aren't going to, your peers aren't going to ask you for your opinion. It's easier for a guy. You know, it really is. A man can go to another man and say, hey, dude, uh, you know, your zipper's down. Or you know what? You can't, you shouldn't, you know, when you're talking to women, you can't, here's some things that you can't do. It's going to help you if you don't do that, man. And uh, again, you've, you've got to be diplomatic, I suppose, when you do that. Uh, that's among peers. But if you are, like I said, when you're a man, you're a leader. If you are leading people, it's your job to give them constructive criticism. Criticism, You have to. If it's your your children or the people who work for you or your peers at work, okay, if, if you are in a situation where you have peers at work, um, we all have the same goal, right? That's what you're there for. You're working for a company and the company has a goal. It's to make money or to help people or build whatever their goal is. You're all trying to get to that goal. So if you have a thing that's going to help your peer or certainly someone who reports to you, it's your duty to tell them, um, hey, man, you got to get to work on time. It's a problem when you don't. You know what I mean? It makes us, it makes everybody else think that you're blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, you you frame it as you will. Um, had some guys working for me. Um, let them know, hey, you know, you guys just aren't fast enough. You're not good enough. You're not trying hard enough. You know, in that circumstance, I fired them, uh, but I told them why. You can't just fire somebody and say, hey, get out of here or make something up. Uh, give them that constructive criticism. They might not listen right now, but they'll never forget it. You know, that's a tough thing to get fired. So they're not going to forget the things that happened around it. The higher level your emotions are, the more likely you are to remember the things. You guys know that. So give that constructive criticism when the opportunity comes up. And then the, the fourth C is just to, is to coach, um, to give uh, like an attaboy or a pat on the back or an encouragement, right? Um, that's what I'm going to call coaching. I suppose all of this is coaching, but um, yeah, the C, it's got a C, so that works better, right? And, you know, you, this is a time-worn order of events, actually, when you do want to build people. You start with the compliment, then you give the criticism, and you coach them after, you know? Hey, you know what you're doing? Let me think. Uh, say a, a dude who's working for me, um, you know, painting with me. You know, actually, I'll talk about Eric again. We were in this basket, and uh, we're up in a 60-foot boom basket, and he's up there driving the boom because I wasn't that good at it. Plus, you had to face backwards to run the boom, and I had to face forwards to paint. So we're both in the basket at the same time. And we'd get to where we wanted to be. I'd guide him, and, and we'd get there, and I'd start to work. And he really was anxious to work too. So he's running all over trying to do stuff. Well, that basket's going all over the place. And I couldn't focus. Like I couldn't keep my hands straight to cut straight lines. And it was making me very like physically uncomfortable, right? Because we're 60 feet up. So I'm like, Eric, man, I know you want to hustle and I appreciate that. There's the confident or the compliment, right? But I need you to just stand still because I'm losing my shit here. Like I can't focus. I can't keep a grip. Um, Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. And there's the coaching, right? So you do things that way and people usually will uh, listen to you. That's a great way to, to present that constructive criticism is to do all four C's at the same time. So that's the second uh, piece of my code of conduct is to build people, right? Um, here's the third piece. Most of the time I will build, I will choose the more difficult path, um, no matter what it is. If it's, uh, you know, I'm going to keep talking about working because that's what i'm doing a lot of right now but um you know if it's hey i can leave there's that thing way up there that i know is there and people down here they might not see it but i could go get a ladder and go up there and, and, and fix it right now that's the harder path but in the end i'm going to have the the, the the clear conscience of knowing that i did everything right and there is no that's invaluable you, you can't you can't put a price on that. For me, that clear conscience, because as soon as I lay down in bed at night and all the, the distractions are gone, anything I did that any choice I made that wasn't the cleanest, that's going to come back into my head. and It's going to cause me a lack of peace. And my peace is the number one goal here, right? That That's when we're talking about the, the three steps. The first goal for me is peace, right? That's where I'm trying to be. So, yeah, most of the time I'm going to choose the more difficult path. now. You know, do I occasionally roll a stop sign? There's nobody around. Yep, I'm gonna do that. That's probably the less difficult path. Uh, but I looked around, and you know, we're gonna go back to 
Friedrich Nietzsche, Nietzsche's uh, Ubermensch. You know, I know what the, the, the spirit of the law is, and that's to keep people from getting in traffic accidents. It's not to make people obey the rules all the time, even when nobody's looking. Uh, so I'll, I'll, hell yeah, I'll roll the stop sign. Shit, I got this one intersection that I go through, and I can see for a half a mile in either direction when I'm coming up to it. And if there's nobody there, I'll roll through that thing at like 30. <laughs> you know, there's nobody there. Uh, I do that sometimes. Uh, that's not the most difficult path, but, you know, it's harmless in my mind. Uh, the difficult path. A lot of times is uh, this is going to walk me right into the fourth thing, and that's uh, to confidently tell the truth, especially when it reflects poorly on me. Okay, that's the difficult thing. It's the difficult thing now, uh, but for me, how that extrapolates out when I don't do it is this: if uh, if I choose not to tell the truth because it's it's efficient and it's expeditious right now and it's it's more comfortable. Uh, now I have to live out that lie. Okay, I've got to maintain and support and remember that lie and 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 uh, be behind it, right? And that's not a thing I want to do. That's that's uh, that's present me giving a fuck you to future me. Okay, making my life harder later on. Okay, when if I I can make it a little bit more difficult right now and make it easier later, right? That's always what you want to do. You want to make current self do favors for future self right so with that tell the truth thing um, what comes with that is ownership and accountability now i love that accountability is one of my favorite words uh, it's one of the least seen traits in people i've noticed uh everything's everybody else's fault nobody will nobody likes to say yeah i screwed that up man i love that i love saying that's my bad you know what i took a dump on that one and and uh Man, I'm sorry. You know that won't happen again. Uh, that happened today. I was texting with uh, with a, uh, a friend of mine, and I said a thing that, as soon as I sent it, I'm like, "Ooh, I don't know if I should have said that." And uh, and she immediately was like, "Hey, that was kind of rude." And I said, "You know what? You're absolutely right. Um, I had a similar thing happen to me, and I didn't like it when that happened. And I'm sorry. You're right. But that's that's my bad. Rather than backpedaling and defending, and getting into an argument over it, when you just own, you can just own it." Everybody makes mistakes. That person I was talking to, she makes mistakes too. Right? And man, does that, it's the most, let me tell you what that looks like from the outside. And I'm telling you this because I know that the fear that you have about uh, admitting mistakes is that people are going to think that there's something wrong with you or you're cracked or you're, you're flawed fundamentally in some way. Uh, no, that's not how it looks at all. When somebody owns their mistakes, people think, wow, that dude must be really fucking confident if they, he can own mistakes. If everything else in his life must be going, everything else must in his life must be going great. If he can own this mistake right now and it doesn't seem to bother him, he's okay with saying, "Yep, that was me," and moving forward. That that looks that's very confident. It is very confident, and it looks that way too, which is an upside. Um, that's what ownership and accountability will give you when you take it on the chin. Uh, you know, that's a super confident thing to do. And again, that's current you doing future you a favor. You've already owned the mistake. You don't now have to worry that it's going to pop out somewhere else, that it's going to come up at some point. You know what I mean? Like uh, I used to uh, just be, be careful how I say this. Uh, when I used to use dating sites, I would set my age lower than it actually is. And I did that for a very simple reason. I'll tell you that it's because, um, you know, I was really focused on having a family. And I knew that older women, women my age, probably were way less, not probably, were very, were way less physically able to do that. Um, so I wanted to be attractive to younger women. And then, of course, I had to worry about, I'm going to have to tell them at some point that that's not the case. Let's say it works out. Let's say you do get the right person where you're going to be able to have a family with them. You start out with a lie. You want to open up with a lie? That's, that's current you, fucking future you. There's way more at stake down the road than there is right now. You know what I mean? So that that's where the honesty comes in, right? You want to be able to own that. You want to be able to, um, you know, go in clean with no worries, nothing that you have to worry people are going to see. Um, yeah, I like to tell people when I'm pretty early in the dating process, yeah, I've been arrested. I went to jail. Um, 
you know, I got fired from a football coaching job, all the shit you guys can find on Google about me. I like to say that stuff right out. Again, I'm owning it. I'm owning it. And then I don't have to worry later on if they're going to find out. Now we're going to have a weird ass conversation. Like, why didn't you tell me? You know what I mean? I don't want to have to do that. I don't think anybody does. Um, yeah. So that actually, that confidence or that um, telling the truth piece goes into the clean conscience and the piece of my fourth uh, personal code of conduct item. And that's this sort of simple phrase that I used to have in my classroom. It was, character is who you are when no one is looking. All right. And what that really means is, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm always a proponent of, hey, you know, be you no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Now, caveat to that, of course, is you're going to act differently, a little bit differently at work. There's a different set of dynamics there. There's a different code of conduct at work than there is when you're with your buddies drinking beer at deer camp or something like that. So, of course, there are different it's a different situation. You need to, that's just behavior. That's not who you are. Um, the character is who you, you are when nobody's watching. What I mean by that is, yeah, you know, even though there are those scenarios, like I just mentioned, um, you know who you are and you decide that you define who you're going to be. and You define that on your own. When other people are watching, that's invariably a biased situation. There's, there's, uh, there's not, it, it's, it's less, um, it's, it's less objective, right? When you have the eyes of other people on you, now that's a different impact on your, your behavior. You know, people are watching. So you are likely to maybe do things differently, especially when you're younger. Uh, but you really figure out who you are when no one is looking. I learned that you know, a long time ago. What I mean is this, are you, you know, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll roll a stop sign when nobody's there. And it isn't because I'm not worried about getting caught. It's because, like I said, I know the spirit of the law and to stop accidents from happening. I'm not going to cause an accident by doing what I'm doing. It isn't, hey, look at me. I'm getting away with something. You know, I'm a rebel and I can. It's not that at all. Um, do you litter when nobody can see it coming out of your window? Is that a thing you'll do? Will you? Uh, I don't know. There, there's a million different things that uh, will make this character is who you are when nobody's watching makes sense um like will you do you talk about your friends the same way when you're not there as you do when they aren't or when they are there i should say um you know i think about that one time i i found myself talking shit about one of my buddies uh to another buddy and man i didn't like how it felt because i mean obviously now you got to worry that the one buddy's going to tell the other buddy what you said but more than that man i want you know you know, you're talking shit about buddy A to buddy B. Uh, you wonder if buddy B is going, I wonder if he talks shit about me to buddy A, right? So are you are you going to do the right thing when no eyes are on you? And that's when you really get to determine yourself. And that's the, the best part of you. That That's the, the thing that you get to take solace in. That's who's left. Uh, again, when all the distractions are gone, you lay down in bed at night. You like that. Do you like that guy or don't you? I found that the, the most uh, challenging and difficult Times in my life are when uh, my beliefs and my actions are not aligned. Yeah, I just said a big thing. That's why I gave you the pause there to think about it. You know you believe uh, one this thing is correct, but you are not behaving in a manner that reflects that belief. When your behaviors and your, your, your beliefs are, are at an intersection, when they're crossed, when they are not parallel, when they're not going in the same way, uh, you are going to be conflicted. You are going to be uncomfortable. That piece that you that I value so much, and you probably do too, is going to not be there. So that's part of this whole process, right? Determining what your beliefs are, and then making sure your behaviors reflect it. So you know that's that's the thing. Uh, see if I can give you an example of that. Uh, I don't know. If, like, my life's pretty aligned right now. <laughs> like everything's going the way that it should. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have a great example of that, but I think I explained it pretty well. And when your your beliefs and your actions are not aligned, like say you're, let's say, let's say you're, a, let's go back to religion, you're a devout Catholic, and uh, it says that, you know, there's the Ten Commandments that you believe in, but you're breaking one of them. You know, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, I think is one of them. I'm probably, I might be crossing them up. I'm not a big Bible scholar, but you are. You're like, you're flirting with your neighbor's wife. You know what I mean? You're, you're running the risk. You're, you're skirting that line of being, uh, unfaithful, which is not a good thing, no matter who you are. Um, you know, if your actions aren't how your beliefs are, it's probably going to cause a ton of stress and a ton of problems for you. You know, I, I counseled a couple of buddies through um, serious affairs, and uh, I watched the stress on them. It was terrible. I mean, I watched them age. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's hard on you when your beliefs and your 
actions are not aligned. So let's see what's the last one here. Difficult path, build people, characters who you are when nobody's watching, confidently tell the truth. In a six week, six, six month rule, I guess that's all of them. I nailed them. I got them all. <laughs> so uh, that's what it is to have a personal code of conduct. I shared with you briefly uh, what mine is, and uh, maybe that will help you. Like I said, the whole idea is to take, you know, a whole bunch of big rules, uh, big uh, ideas, and translate them into a day-to-day -day manageable, bite-sized situation. Like we talked about with Trey Tucker the other day. That's his, that's his uh, competition with himself is to take these massive psychological concepts and break them down into small enough bite-sized pieces that he can get them out in a TikTok video or an Instagram and help more people. Uh, you know, that's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valiant and uh, in noble goal that he has. And he, he's accomplishing it every day. He's an impressive guy. If you didn't see that show with Trey Tucker, you definitely need to check it out. He was great. All righty, there it is. Uh, my name is Travis Neville. This is the Travis Neville Podcast. I wrote this book called Ideal Man Reviving Masculinity. I got new t-shirts coming out. They actually say Ideal Man across the chest you are a, a, a listener if you have been watching the show if you're a, if you like the book grab one of those t-shirts they are on the web, website already i haven't changed the pictures yet but if you order a travis neville podcast t-shirt that's what you're going to get it's one that says ideal man across the chest at this point uh, so get into that travisneville.com my name is travis neville this is the travis neville podcast i hope that in some way this show helped you get your shit together have a great week